Good morning. Um, I wanted to get on here because I have a testimony to share. And uh, the Lord wants me to share it. So I know it's, it's going to bless somebody today. Actually, I want to pray for that right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that you would bless anybody watching right now. Lord, I pray that this, this would just invade their hearts. Lord, I pray that healing would take place. Uh, through through this word today, uh, through this testimony, Lord, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So I just thank you um, that this is going to be an encouragement. This is going to be empowering. Um, this is going to be liberating and, and freeing for the people watching this today. Um, because whom, whom the Son sets free is truly free indeed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Okay, so today is Thursday, October 26, 2023. Uh, I was outside today. I was worshiping. I was dancing around. Um, I felt the joy of the Lord so strong. And I was just laughing, you know, like a little kid, just really caught up in the moment. And uh, when I sat down, the Lord told me to take my headphones off that he wanted to he wanted to speak to me. He wanted to speak to me. And it's almost like he was preparing me. This is the best way I can describe it. He was preparing me uh, for a deliverance that was about to take place and explaining to me that this has initiated my rejection over and over and over again my, my entire life um, and explaining to me its origins and everything else. But you know, he, he, it started to rain just like very lightly. And the Lord was saying, this is, this is going to be healing rain. And he said, as the rain is, is, is falling, let, let it wash away. Let it wash away the pain of these things. He was telling me, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. So as this rain was falling, um, I just, I just started trembling from head to foot um, I let out quite a few cries. Um, the tears were just nonstop. Um, and then this is what he said to me. This is just so beautiful how the Lord works and how it's custom made to everything that you have gone through, right? Because he promises us, he promises us life and life more abundantly. And that's not talking about some sort of prosperity gospel. I'm talking about in an, an, an abundant thought life, abundant emotional health, a sound mind in, in every sense of the word. Hallelujah. So this is what the Lord said to me. He said, the soul wound I delivered you from cut you very deep and would have destroyed everything I have for you. He said, be free, my love, be healed, beloved. And then he proceeded to tell me what I had just been delivered from. And I was, I was in shock and amazement, but I, I let out like this, this just uncontrollable laughter and excitement because I know, um, that he is truly making me a brand new creation from glory to glory. And I even felt different afterwards. I can't explain it, but I felt different. Um, so the Lord said that he broke a stronghold of rejection. I can even tell you, um, you know, why rejection came into my life in the first place. So when my mom was pregnant with me, and I think she was about seven or eight months, she was very close to um, giving birth. And she walked in on my father and my father was having a threesome. My father was cheating on her and her heart was crushed and she immediately wanted to die. That was her, her immediate reaction is that she wanted to take her life. So my grandfather used to have a camp and that's where they were staying. And, um, she went down to the dock now. My mom never learned how to swim. So she jumped off the dock while she was pregnant with me. And that's when a spirit of rejection entered in. And the stronghold of rejection, because strongholds are built up over time, was uh, 
continual rejection throughout my life over and over again because of the spirit that entered in because of the curse. So he said it was a stronghold of rejection that's been broken, a spirit of rejection that loosed me and let me go, a curse of rejection that was broken off of my life, a spirit of abandonment, fear of abandonment, a stronghold of abandonment, the emotional pain from continual rejection and abandonment. The ideas and image that I had of myself based on that abandonment and rejection. The Lord explained to me that I internalized the rejection and abandonment that I was on the receiving end of. And I actually made it part of my identity. So I, I was speaking curses of abandonment and rejection over myself. Pay attention to what you're speaking over yourself. Please, when you say things like, you know, this always happens and they always do this and that, 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 you are speaking curses over yourself. So be wary and mindful of that. And the minute that you catch yourself doing that, denounce it, renounce it, take it back. So the Lord confirmed that those are broken, not just off of me, but my entire generational line. And um, that reminded me of a, a vision that I had maybe about three, three, maybe three and a half years ago. And uh, I was... I was deep in prayer and I had this vision and in the vision I was facing all of my living family members and I had on this like thick iron collar and so did they and the iron collar was like attached to this thick chain right and in the vision the iron collar started to crack like straight through the center straight through the middle but when it dropped off of my neck, it dropped off of all of theirs. And I had remembered a year before that, when I first started going to the church that I was attending at the time, the pastor's wife saying something to me that was prophetic, but I had no idea what it meant. She said, when it breaks off of you, it will break off of them. And then I had this vision about a year later and now the Lord is saying to me that he just broke an entire generational line worth of rejection and abandonment off of my life now the rejection came in when my mom tried to commit suicide while she was pregnant with me but the Lord is gracious and the Lord is merciful so as she had jumped into the water and uh, realized the error of her way. She said, you know, it's one thing that she wanted to take her life, but how dare her make that decision for her unborn child. So she clung to the dock and she started to call for help. And somebody actually came and pulled her up out of the water. This was pretty late at night, as far as I know. And um, the abandonment. The fear of abandonment, the stronghold of abandonment, and the spirit of abandonment. The Lord revealed to me uh, that that was a result of my mom's multiple partners, right? So my mom, and I'm going to say this in the nicest way possible. My mom almost had a different boyfriend every time I turned my head. And I really wanted a father figure because uh, the father that I had was emotionally unavailable. He just could not be there for me in the way that I needed him to be emotionally. Um, he was just very detached in that way. Um, always kept me kind of at arm's length. I never felt like I could get close to him. And so I would get all excited when my mom had a new boyfriend and we would form bonds and we would get close and we would do things together and then they would leave. And then they would leave. And then they would leave. Why? Because my mom had a spirit of rejection. So everybody would just leave. No matter how much they claimed to love her, uh, no matter how many years they were together, the spirit of reject rejection would initiate her rejection over and over again. And it was like a domino effect, right? It was a vicious cycle. It was a vicious pattern because then I would be rejected over and over again by somebody that I had now considered to be my stepdad or 
you know, somebody, somebody that, that was a, a role model, somebody that I, I looked up to. So this abandonment was happening over and over and over again. And I can remember one time in particular where, yeah, it was my sister's father and, um, my mom had been with him seven years. So she called it a common law marriage. There's no such thing. You're either married or you're not. Um, but she called it a common law marriage and he left, uh, seven years into the relationship, uh, for somebody much younger because he was much younger than her. And, um, I just remember, I remember this like it was yesterday. I saw him leaving. I knew something was horribly wrong. I knew, I knew he was going to go and that I might not see him again. And I was scared and I clung to his leg. I remember clinging to his leg and he kept dragging his leg like he kept trying to walk. And finally he peeled my arms off his leg and just left me there crying on the floor. I think I was about seven. <laughs> my lord um and so it all makes sense right it just all makes sense where all of these things uh would cause these ideas uh to be formed in my mind about um attachments and attachment being a scary thing um, and because attachment was a scary thing i would go uh after because of the spirit of rejection, um, emotionally unavailable people uh, like my father, knowing full well that they couldn't meet me in the ways that I needed to be met, uh, which is like a self-sabotaging behavior. And I did it over and over again. So I repeated the pattern that I, I watched growing up where all of a sudden I could not be alone. I could not be single for a long period of time. If someone broke up with me, I had to go find somebody else in quickly because I couldn't stand to be alone with myself or my thoughts. So just to put it bluntly, uh, the honeymoon phase of a relationship was my drug of choice. And how many of us know that the honeymoon phase does not last very long. So I was always chasing that high over and over again as soon as somebody left. And they always did. They always did. But praise the Lord, that's not going to happen anymore. He said, you're not going to be rejected anymore. You're not going to be abandoned anymore because you are, you are accepted in the beloved and you finally understand who you are. You know that you are the daughter of a king. You know that you are a daughter of God. You know that even if your mother and forsake you, that I won't. You know that I, you're, you're not a burden to me. I'm never going to turn you away. I am always listening. And because I know those things, I can now be, be free of all the lies that the devil told me through these experiences. Um, and another thing he said is that I, I spoke these curses of abandonment and rejection over myself. And he confirmed those are broken. So because that was my expectancy, because... That seemed to be the norm because that seemed to be the pattern because that seemed to be the cycle. I was speaking these things over myself so that it could continue. But again, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and we serve a gracious God. And then I just got hit with this incredible I don't know if you call it regret. It was deep repentance. Like, Lord, why are you doing this for me? Why? Why are you so kind? Why are you so loving? Why are you so gracious? I used to blaspheme you. I used to mock you. I used to laugh at you and the things of you. I couldn't stand you. I despised you because I thought that you were responsible for every bad thing that ever happened to me. And yet you're going to heal me anyway. Yet you're going to deliver me anyway. You're going to give me peace in areas where I thought that, you know, it was, it was always 
going to be like this. Like I had pretty much succumbed to the fact that this area of my life was never going to change. But he really does give us a new heart. He makes the desires of his heart our own. And recently I was going through that, that rejection all over again. And I was like, Lord, why? Why is this happening all over again? And he was explaining to me. If you don't get delivered from this. If I don't liberate you from your captivity in this bondage. And it goes very deep is what he was explaining to me. It would destroy everything I want to do in and through you. Everything I have for you. That is why God's timing. God's timing is so important. Don't ever try to rush something before it's time. Don't try to rush something before it's time. Don't try to awaken love before it's time. Don't try to expedite uh, your deliverance and your healing. Because even your deliverance and your healing has an appointed time. And there's a reason for it. I always wonder like why, why uh, when I was prayed over before and why when I went through uh, deliverance before I, I was never fully healed from these two things. But he was using them for the benefit of others. He was using them for the benefit of, of others. To show them things within themselves. And so it's a win-win. It's a win-win. And by his stripes. By every lash that Jesus Christ received. On his back. We are truly. Truly healed. We are truly. Truly healed. There is nothing that you have been through in this life that he cannot liberate you from in a moment. But the Lord doesn't want you to want a relationship with him just for the benefits of what he can do for you. The Lord wants a relationship with you because he made you, he created you. And he wants to walk you through this life in this fallen world. He wants to be with you every step of the way. He wants to order your steps. He wants to direct your path. He wants to comfort you. He wants to counsel you. He wants to be your strength and empowerment in every area where you are weak because he knows how weak we are. Our flesh may fail, but the Lord is our portion forever. He knows that the righteous will fall seven times, but they get back up, not by any might or, or power of their own, but by his spirit that comes to live in us the minute that we confess his name. The minute that we acknowledge that we're a sinner in need of a savior, the minute we humble ourselves. The Lord wants a relationship with you. He wants to show you the origins of some of your greatest battles. He wants to help you understand how what happened to you is actually being used for the benefit of another, even though it didn't seem like a blessing at the time. It most definitely did not. But he takes everything that the enemy meant for evil, everything the enemy meant to destroy you, everything the enemy meant to break you apart, everything the enemy meant to cut you to pieces, everything the enemy meant to destroy your image of self, and he flips it all the way around for your good, for the good of others. Every single time you open your mouth, he speaks through you. If you just submit, if you just allow yourself to be used, if you just hit, you yield to his will and his way, there is nothing he will not do for you. But he already knows 
for what's in our heart. He knows our motives. So you can't hide it from him. If you're, if you're just going to God because you want something, he knows. But if you're getting in the presence of the Lord because you genuinely enjoy it, because in his presence of full is fullness of joy and you can't get that anywhere else. He gives us a, a rest and a peace unlike anything you can find anywhere else. And the only thing that he asks is that we make him a priority. That we keep him in the forefront of our minds. That we do everything as unto him. If we work a job, we do it as if the Lord was our employer. When we go out and do some kind of uh, charity work, right? We just, we go out and try to help another individual. We put our best foot forward as if we're doing it unto the Lord. And he will bless you for it. Not just that, but when you're praying over other people, You're praying for their healing. You're praying for their deliverance. You're, you're praying for their, their liberty. You're praying for their breakthrough. Yours comes. There's some kind of currency that happens. Kind of like the exchange, right? The exchange, our filthy rags for the righteousness of God. Well, when you're praying and you're interceding for other people in those ways, it comes back to you in the form of healing, in the form of deliverance, in the form of provision, in the form of favor. But that's not why we do this thing. We do this because we love Jesus. Why? Because he first loved us in our wretched state, neck deep in our sin, slapping his hand away, wanting no part of him. He first loved us. He saw us when no one else did. And for that, I am just truly grateful that I can't even share this testimony, testimony with you. And I'm still undone. That he would. That he would choose to do all of this. When three quarters of my life. All I did was disrespect him. All I did was mock him. All I did was laugh at him. All I did was try to drag other people down to hell with me. But his, his forgiveness is so complete and so perfect. And his mercy is unfathomable. I can't understand it. I'm not sure I ever will. But his mercy really does endure forever. Hallelujah. And I'm just so glad that um, I can call him mine and I am his. Amen. <laughs>